All right, boys, welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. In our last episode, we left off configuring our Proxmox host on Hetzner. Um, if you followed my guide, you'll notice you have a Proxmox host that's configured, but no way for you to get the network traffic in or out. This video is going to walk you through how to configure both getting network traffic out, you know, getting things set up so that you can give your VMs internet traffic as well as getting internet traffic in so you can set up port forwarding and other rules and also how to set up a basic security setup so that your vm traffic is separate from your host traffic right and um, as well as so that internet traffic that's coming in is also separated from your host traffic which is very useful for keeping things nice and secure okay so the very first thing we're going to do assuming you've set this up and we're starting from the point where you have no security settings is we're going to configure this so that we lock down SSH access, right? So let's go ahead and let's do that. So the first thing we we'll want to do is use nano to enter our SSH config file, which is at sshd, let's see, SSH, sshd config. All right. And then if we scroll through sshd config, we see permit root login is set to yes. We'll turn pub key authentication to yes. And then we'll see if we can find password authentication, which is set to no. Okay. Use spam um, x ssh keygen. Okay. Ah, okay. So we already have our ssh keys. All right, cool, perfect. And then system ctl reload SSHD. all right cool so we've just changed our ssh security mode to public key authentication so even if someone has our password they still need our public key to get access to our account so that just made our host a little bit more secure the next thing you're going to want to do after you've made your proxmox host secure is to go ahead and turn on 2fa I've already enabled 2FA here. You can go to root. Well, let's say we were to create a new account. You would click add TOTP. You could then add another 2FK, 2FA key here. What this basically means is that users cannot log into the web interface, even if they have the password without that 2FA key. So it's just another method for you to more it's just another method for you to lock the Proxmox host down just a little bit more, make things a little bit more secure for yourself. You do have a virtualization host on the internet, so you want to take as many precautions as you can. <laughs> so with our host now properly secured, let's talk about the network settings we're going to need in order to get our VMs traffic. First, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and click on our Proxmox host and we'll go to network. Now, if you're paying attention here, you'll notice I have three different bridges. One of them is Virtual Bridge Zero, which you should have after you initially set it up. All right? These other two are irrelevant, so let's remove them. Or rather, uh, give me a second here. All right, so let's see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove these two network bridges right here. Okay, so when you first enter your Proxmox host, you'll see Virtual Bridge Zero, which will have uh, interface ENP 35S0 attached to it with an IP address. This is perfectly fine if we want just the Proxmox host to have internet. But if we'd like our guests to have internet too, we're going to need to do a couple things. Right. The very first thing we're going to want to do is create a DMZ. So this is a bridge for guests that are going to be getting basically natted internet traffic that is not secured or protected in any way. Then we're going to give this an IP address. 10 0 20 254 slash 24. All right, cool, perfect. Now, oop. give it the common of DMZ, not the bridge port of DMZ, right? And then we're going to create another bridge, bridge two. We're going to call this guest LAN. Then we can also make this bridge VLAN aware as well if you want to get fancy. Right, and then we're going to create this. So we've created two bridge. 
bridges and if you're paying attention you'll notice we do not have an IP address on the second or I guess technically third bridge we hit apply we hit yes and we're done All right so now we have three bridges but we're not quite all the way there yet we need to apply some NAT rules to this bridge to give this bridge internet access so let's do that right now so let's open up the Proxmox host let's go back to the shell let's go back to Etsy network interfaces and let's come here so if you're paying attention we'll then come down to the DMZ bridge and we'll hit enter right and then here's what we can do we're gonna use IP tables to enable NAT forwarding on this bridge right here the first thing we'll want to do is enable IPv4 forwarding on this bridge so we enter this command right here and basically what this says is after it brings the host up enable which is what echo one does IP forwarding so we then go to the next line so we've enabled IP forwarding which we need to get NAT working from there we add our NAT rules so let's get back to what this is talking about first we have our IP forwarding enabled right here All right so they, this basically says after it brings up this bridge enable IP forwarding this says after it brings up this bridge use the IP tables to enable a post routing NAT right so after it's already done all the routing and change the source IP to 10 30 24 and send that out virtual bridge zero this also does the same thing it says hey after you go down like this one post down basically undoes what we just did All right so let's see here 10 24 so from there here's what we can do so with those rules enabled we then have to i reload s a and then we'll verify the rules have been applied All right next we need to create a pfsense host so what we can do is then go ahead and download pfsense so let's go to local from there we have to install a router OpenSense is my preferred router i've already downloaded the OpenSense iso this can be gotten by going to OpenSense or just google searching for OpenSense iso and click the first result and make sure you select amd64 and dvd and then hit download and it'll download an iso copy of the open sense installer for you once that's been downloaded oh you can also just download it directly to the proxmox host by doing this clicking copy link address paste and go right you can do that and then just click download from url and paste it here and it'll just download it from there but you should note that it downloads as a bz2 file so you're going to have to unzip the iso but what i like to do is from there i create a OpenSense host so you create a new vm we'll call this one router we'll click next choose the OpenSense installer hit next um, hit next we'll give this a 64 gigabyte and of course we'll give it right through cache and this is an SSD right we'll go ahead and click next give this two cores next two gigs of RAM next and this is the most important part we will connect it to the DMZ bridge next and we'll start this after it's well we'll connect it to the DMZ bridge but we're not quite done yet once we have the OpenSense installer connected to the DMZ bridge we then have to add a second interface remember this is our router and this virtual router is how our guests are going to get internet so what we then do is we add a second interface that is for our guest LAN and from there we then start the OpenSense installer escape for boot menu and then one and then there we go all right so what we're doing now is we're booting the OpenSense installer and we're going to go ahead and we're going to install OpenSense 
and then we're going to use OpenSense as our virtual router to manage the internet access for our guests. All right? Why would you want to use OpenSense as a virtual router? It, because it allows you an easy way to manage firewall rules of guests. Right? It just makes managing multiple things a whole lot easier. Okay, hold on. Something's not right here. Stop. Yes. Okay. Start. So we're waiting for the installer to start up. Okay, cool. So we are at the OpenSense page. And so in order to install OpenSense, what you do is you connect the ISO, you allow it to boot into regular mode, and then the username you're going to use is OpenSense, and the password is installer. So let's see, installer, OpenSense. Oh, I got that I'm confused. So the user is installer and the password is open since. So continue with default. We install 64 gigs. Yes. Yes. All right, cool. And we go ahead and we just let it um, install onto that guest while we let it reboot. All right, cool. So we now have our OpenSense host installed. What we didn't want to do is our sign our interfaces. So we hit no. We don't want to configure our VLANs right now. Our LAN interface is going to be VTNet zero. All right, actually sign interfaces. No, no, VTNet zero for WAN, VTNet one for LAN. Do you want to proceed? Yes. All right, cool. And we'll go ahead and let it try to auto configure the two interfaces. It's going to fail with auto configuring the WAN. It's going to be looking for a, an automatically assigned IP. That's fine. We can go ahead and apply our own IP eventually. So let's wait a couple seconds here. As we can see, the two interfaces are assigned here. What we didn't want to do is configure our WAN interface for internet. So what we do is hit two to configure WAN. And then what we then do is go back to PVE Hertz. It will notice we set our IP to 103254. So what we do is we go to our router and we just have to set our router to an IP in that range. So we hit no. 10, oh, and we enter an IP of 10031. And then we enter our subnet mask of 24, 10, 0, 10, 0, 30. Then we have to set our gateway. So we have to set the gateway. In this case, for the virtual interface, the gateway is the IP of the Proxmox hosts virtual bridge one. So our gateway is 10, 0, 30, 2, 5, 4, right? So this would be 10, 0, 30, 2, 5, 4. Oh, 10, 0, 30, 2, 5, 4. 10032.54. Do you want to use the gateways to name server 2? I shall use 1111 as my uh, name server. And no. No, no, leave everything default. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll let this reboot. And then we'll confirm everything works. And let's test this. There we go. So now our Proxmox hosts, or rather our OpenSense guest, has internet access. And it has internet access via natting that internet traffic through the Proxmox host. Right. Very useful 